some of y'all gonna hate me. This is for the man's music, not for any of his accolades. I know you guys are gonna drag me in the comments. Honestly, I feel like that's all I need to say and we're just gonna move on. Up until this album, I was like, I don't believe you. Well, some of you are gonna be surprised by, by these choices. What's up everybody and welcome to Danny Sylvan vlog. Before we even get into the video, take two seconds and just hit that subscribe button. Help a brother out. <laughs> also, while you're at it, take another two seconds and hit that post notification bell that you see there so you know every time that I post a video for Danny Sylvan vlog or for fine details by Danny Sylvan. So as you guys can already see from the title of the video, today's video will be based on my top 10 no skip albums. Oh yes. It sounds exactly like what it is, or it is exactly how it sounds, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Basically the title explains itself, people, okay? The video will be focused on the top 10 albums that I listen to that I never skip any tracks on. I listen to the whole album from top to bottom and that is generally how I like to listen to albums if I can. I like albums that tell a story from start to finish. Each track kind of taking me through the artist's journey or their artistic vision. So I love an album where I am not going to skip the track and the list of top 10 albums that I have that's exactly what they do I actually got this video idea from uh, youtuber Terrell Grice so uh, thank you Terrell he is great go check him out if you haven't checked him out yet I was like this is a really cool concept so <laughs> I'm gonna snatch that without further ado let's get into my top 10 no skip albums Now, if anybody knows me, you would know that I am a pretty indecisive person. So when I was coming up with a list of 10 albums, only 10 albums <laughs> that I don't skip, that was very challenging for me. So I had to do some honorable mentions and I've got six of those. Number one would be Yours Truly by Ariana Grande. That was her very first studio album and let me just make this clear. Actually, I should give some disclaimers. Here's a disclaimer. When it comes to my musical interest and taste, I do find, some of y'all gonna hate me. <laughs> I do find that females dominate pretty much every single genre of music to date. I feel like it's always been that way. Whether it's R&B, hip-hop, pop, um, country. I just enjoy the female voice and what they can do artistically generally more than men. The only genre of music where I find that females don't necessarily dominate it would be like jazz or blues. So a lot of these are gonna be females and um, without any spoilers, well, this will not be the last time you hear the name Ariana or Grande in this video. So, <laughs> that's what I have to say about that. Back to the honorable mentions. So, Yours Truly by Ariana Grande is an honorable mention for me. The other one is An Invitation to the Cookout. So, speaking of uh, Terrell Grice, he made an album and got a bunch of crazy talented artists to feature on the album like uh, Shalea was on it and Avery Wilson, that's his name, Avery, Avery, Avery Wilson, don't drag me. Um, it has such 90s and sometimes even like a touch of 80s to it uh, as far as R&B and soul that it is so enjoyable but um, there is like maybe two songs on there where I'm like next so 
that's an honorable mention. Tell Me You Love Me by Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato is one of those artists where up until this album, I was like, I don't believe you. Like she would sing, <laughs> that sounds so harsh, but she would sing certain songs or she would sing things and I'm like, girl, <laughs> I don't believe a word you're saying. You're not that girl. Like I just, I was like, mm -mm, this doesn't seem like it's connecting what you're singing to what I see of you. Like that song, what's wrong with being confident? I'm like, are you confident though? Because <laughs> I'm not gonna drag Demi Lovato. I don't know what her fan base is called, but I don't want them coming for me, so. <laughs> Moving on, this album though, Tell Me You Love Me, was the first time where I was like, oh, this is who you are as an artist. I, I feel like some of the songs on there, Cry Baby, and of course, um, Sorry Not Sorry, and there's just a few other like really good bangers, but also really heartfelt and emotional ones where I'm like, okay, this makes sense for you now. So Tell Me You Love Me is definitely an honorable mention. Another honorable mention, and let me just be clear about this. This is for the man's music, not for any of his accolades, anything that he does in his personal life. But for his music, nobody can really deny that he's talented. Chris Brown. Chris Brown, Chris Breezy, his 2005 album, self-titled Chris Brown. It was a great album. Run It, Yo Excuse Me Miss, Give Me That, I think was on there. Uh, yeah, there was like, there was some pretty, pretty good tracks on that one. And my 2005 behind was definitely bumping that. So, let's come to think about it, was probably inappropriate for my time, but <laughs> the kids these days listen to worse, so whatever. <laughs> These honorable mentions are taking a lot longer than I thought. There's gonna be a lot of editing for this video. Okay. I decided, Big Sean, that's the next one that's honorable mention. Um, I don't have much to say about it other than I really do enjoy Big Sean. Um, as far as like the genre of rap, he is definitely up there for me as far as my tastes. I feel like he's smart. I feel like he's intelligent and his lyricism it's just, it's it's pretty good, it's pretty genius. And I feel like he's one of those artists that is not just rapping about that life. You know what I mean. He's talking about real things. He's talking about um, real struggles and the things that he raps about, I think everybody can relate to. So yeah, I decided was definitely um, one worth to mention. Didn't quite make the cut though. Last one for honorable mentions is Serena by Coltrane. He is, I believe, an artist from the UK. And I don't even know, I think he was one of those artists that I kind of found from leaving my uh, Spotify on shuffle on like a random playlist. And I heard one of his songs and I was like, who is that? So I loaded that one and then before I knew it, loaded the whole album. With all of these honorable mentions, there's usually like one or two that I do skip. Um, which is like, it's not in my top 10, but it was definitely worth mentioning. Check out Coltrane, he's pretty good. All right, now let's get into the actual top 10 albums that I do not skip one single track to. Number 10, Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. <laughs> Some of you are gonna be surprised by, by these choices. It's such a shame because I did not know a thing about her music or her, really her artistry while she was still living on this earth. I actually discovered her years after her passing. I was actually, I was at work uh, at a record store and one of my coworkers was like, oh, do you mind if I play her album? And I was like, no, like go for it, you know? And I'm sitting there listening to it and I'm like, this is Amy Winehouse. She's not like slurring her words. You, we all know the reputation that she had um, and rehab, you know, like everyone's like, oh, rehab, rehab. But her album Back to Black is so much more than just that song. We've got things like Mr. and Mrs. Jones, Just Friends, Wake Up Alone. These are tracks that really dig deep and she's really telling 
a story about her life and about her struggles. You can hear the like genuine pain and heartache in her voice. And again, like I said at the beginning, an artist who's able to tell a story just through one album, that makes you feel so much closer to them and makes them relatable. Those are the artists that have sold out stadiums. Those are the artists who people gravitate towards because it's not this is your brand and this is what you have to pump out. I don't know her full story, but I imagine that that wasn't her thing. So Amy Winehouse, uh, may you rest in peace, but that album was a bomb. So good. Number nine, my Canadian wannabe Jamaican, Drake. <laughs> Views is number nine. To me, Views was the first album that Drake did where I, again, kind of similar to Demi Lovato's Tell Me You Love Me, I feel like he really had a flavor and say in kind of what he was saying. It was the first album where I was like, I think this is you. I think this fits what I see of you, who you are, where you are in your life at that point, you know, uh, so it was good. It also had bangers. Controla, One Dance, Fire and Desire. Okay, Drake was killing it with that. So Views is definitely one of those albums where I enjoyed thoroughly from the very first song to the very last one. I feel like that was the first album where, and again, I don't know this to be factual, where like he had quite a few songs at number one. Now he's consistently at number one, but I think that was the first album that kind of launched that process. So Views is definitely number nine for me. Number eight. Number eight is a soundtrack. This soundtrack came out in 2018 from a film, and that film is A Star Is Born. Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. First of all, ignore the fact that I bawled throughout the movie. The music, the music was so good. And I find myself puzzled even till this day because it's not the typical sound that I'm used to. There was, I feel like, a bit of a country twang to some of the songs, especially the ones that Bradley Cooper sang. Um, but then there was also pop elements, and I definitely love the pop songs more. <laughs> like, Heal Me, Why Did You Do That, Do That, Do That, okay, I'm not gonna do that, but Why Did You Do That To Me, Hair Body Face, like, those ones were really good. But also, Maybe It's Time, Music To My Eyes, Look What I Found, those ones were really, really good. I just feel like it was written nicely. I feel like it was executed nicely. And to me, the music is what really drove the narrative of the movie. So I appreciated it. Watch the movie if you haven't watched it yet. I know it was super hyped up leading up to its release and then when it released. I'm the type of person where I kind of uh, contest to hype. If it's hyped, I'm like, I'm probably not gonna like it. <laughs> but I actually like this one, so check it out when you get the chance. All right, moving on. Number seven is Hiding Place by Tori Kelly. Now let me tell you something about <laughs> white girls <laughs> who can sing. First one I really discovered was JoJo. Tori Kelly, close second. She can sing. She can really, really, really sing. And her uh, first album, I think it was her first album, what's the title of her first album? Unbreakable Smile? Now I need to look this up. Oh, I was right. Unbreakable Smile, yeah, in 2016. So yeah, her first album, Unbreakable Smile, definitely had some decent tracks on it. But this one? Okay, let me tell you what I like about Hiding Place. As a believer, It was very cool and encouraging to see somebody who's classically in the genre of pop put out a gospel album. <laughs> you know, Tori Kelly was on her way to being a mainstream pop icon, and she still is. Don't get that twisted. But a lot of people, especially if they are believers, don't then 
decide in the middle of that track to becoming a pop superstar, decide that they're gonna put out a gospel album. <laughs> That doesn't just happen. So the fact that she did that was super encouraging and it was done extremely well. I believe Kirk Franklin was a producer on that and you can definitely hear it in the music, but she did a fantastic job uh, from Masterpiece to Never Alone, Just As Sure, Sunday. Sunday was a track. And then of course, God Help Us To Love. Those are all really, really, really good songs. And then what's the last one? Um, Souls Anthem, It Is Well. Um, amazing, absolutely amazing. Number six would be Case Study 01 by Daniel Caesar. Don't throw stones, okay? <laughs> but when he first started putting out music, and he was getting a bunch of hype. I was kind of like, okay, you know, he has a good voice and you know, all that, but I don't really see the big deal. It took me until this album to really figure that out because every single song on this album slaps. From Candy, okay, to Open Up, Love Again with Brandy. Yeah, that, that was what really got me, my eyes open to the brilliance and his storytelling of his music and just kind of melodically where he places things, like the decisions that are made in what he creates. I, I have to applaud it. I have to applaud it. Now, I done told you it was not the last time you were going to hear the name Ariana or Grande. So with that, number five is Dangerous Woman. <laughs> I'm now realizing, as I'm recording this, there's a common thread to the albums that I really enjoy and that are on my lists. It's albums where I feel that the artist is, for the first time, showcasing who they are truly as an artist, what their voice can really do as an artist, and that's what Dangerous Woman did for me. Like I said, Yours Truly, which was in the honorable mentions, was a great album, you know? But there were certain songs on there where I was like, I don't know if Ariana even wanted this. This sounds crazy, but I feel like you can hear sometimes in the studio recorded album or track when an artist is feeling what they're singing and when they're not. You can hear when it's someone who said, take this, learn it, and regurgitate it, sing, do it, versus an artist really taking the time, writing their own music, or working with someone to write a piece of music and artistry that really um, comes from the heart. And Dangerous Woman? Aside from it being dotty, <laughs> which I love, it was really good and I was like, okay, Ari, I see you. Like, I, I actually see you in these songs. Dangerous Woman, that song was great. Into You, another banger. Moonlight, Leave Me Lonely with Macy Gray. I don't care. To me, it was like the first introduction. Here is Ariana Grande. The thing about Ariana Grande is she just, she, she can sing. Like, I don't know how else to put it. She can sing. The things she can do with her voice. You have to applaud that. Like, that's what attracts me to artists the most. It's like, the things you can do with your voice. And I so badly want to call out artists that are like, super hyped, but are bland toast. And I can't because I don't want to get dragged by you people. <laughs> so I'm gonna just keep my comments to myself and move on to number four. Number four, Ungodly Hour by Chloe and Hallie. Chloe and Hallie, I actually discovered years ago and I was trying to think about when exactly I discovered them on YouTube and these two young women young girls at the time were doing covers of like pretty great songs from pretty high status artists. They were doing of course covers by like Beyonce and I think they did a Christina Aguilera cover and like they've done a few other ones and they were just getting views, numbers, hits and I was like 
wow, who are these two black queens, you know? And they did put out an album, their first uh, studio album, and it was okay, but again, didn't feel authentic. Ungodly Hour, however, feels very authentic. I feel like they let us in a little bit, just, just a tiny little peek of who they are. Because, I mean, these are technically ABC or Disney kids on Grownish, and and they've done, I think, other things along those lines. So I feel like this album was like a little taste, just a little insight of who they are as young women, but didn't show us too much now because they still want to get that check from Disney. <laughs> So, yeah, I I love it. From Do It to Ungodly Hour, Forgive Me, Don't Make This Hard On Me, <laughs> Busy Boy, you are calling out all of them in <laughs> Busy Boy. Like, they're truly class act, black queens. We love to see it. Don't we love to, we love to see it. Moving on to number three. Funny enough, I just noticed that my number four was Chloe and Halle, and the record label that they are under um, is in correlation with number three on my list, which is the ultimate queen, royalty herself, Beyonce. Beyonce? Beyonce, her Lemonade album. Honestly, I feel like that's all I need to say and we're just gonna move on. So, Beyonce's Lemonade album is number three. It's pretty self-explanatory. Moving on to number two. <laughs> I'm just playing for some of you who are still sleeping, I guess. I will go into why Lemonade is like number three on the list and don't drag me for it not being number one. Lemonade, I don't even know how I don't even know if I have the words, honestly. <laughs> like, you want to talk about storytelling? That's what Lemonade did. It told a whole story. And visually, it told a story. But without the visuals even, just in the tracks themselves, the, the, there's a whole story being told. This is why I, can't, like, I, I should have really just moved on because I don't really have words to explain the genius of that album. Um, I don't, but Don't Hurt Yourself is my favorite <laughs> song on the album. Sandcastles makes me cry. Daddy Lessons, of course, Formation, Hold Up, Sorry. Like, it was. it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. I don't really have anything else to say. Moving on to number two. I know you guys are gonna drag me in the comments. I know it. I know you guys are gonna drag me in the comments. I know, I'm just, I'm mentally preparing myself for that. Some of you, the real ones, the real ones will hold me down. But some of you are going to drag me in the comments because yes, Ariana Grande is being mentioned again. I don't know how much I can articulate how much I love this woman's artistry through her vocal ability. And that's why <laughs> number two is Thank You Next. When I tell you I had this album on repeat, baby. <laughs> repeat it was so good every single song um, again telling a story especially for all that had happened to her was it the year or year and a half prior to its release that that was an album so she put out sweetener before that and uh, Sweetener, honestly, out of all the albums that she's put out is probably my lowest because Sweetener felt extremely, felt like her like management and her team was like, you need to put out, after all that you went through, like you need to put out a heartfelt album that people will be able to kind of like grieve and mourn with you. And I totally support there being songs 
for people to grieve and mourn um, everything that she went through and all those families went through and what happened in the UK. I just, I felt that like, especially because of the timing, <laughs> She put out Sweetener, and no more than like a year later, she put out Thank You Next. So I feel like it was like, okay, let me get Sweetener done, and then let me put out what I actually want to put out. I don't know if that made any sense, but yeah. To me, it was the ultimate bounce back, and we love to see it. We just love to see it. The actual song Thank You Next, um, fantastic. In my head, imagine needy Seven Rings, which is my favorite song on the album, is the ultimate flex. Like, I've never seen a harder flex than that. If you haven't listened to the lyrics of that song yet, really pay attention to what she's saying. Just, just look it up, Google it, because it's the ultimate flex, and I'm not mad. I'm not mad. All right, this brings me to my number one no skip album. Drum roll, please. It is 24 Karat Magic by Bruno Mars. <laughs> 24 Karat Magic came out in 2016. I think that I discovered it probably in 2017, and I think it toured until like 2019 or something. That speaks to the magnitude of genius that this album really is. The man doesn't have to do another album for at least another five years. The man is probably rolling in money because he was able to make so much off of one album. That's so rare. That's so rare to find in an album from an artist, you know? 24 Karat Magic from start to finish, and it only has, I think, what, nine songs? Like, it's not a whole lot of songs on there. Yep, nine songs. It's not like there's even in the double digits uh, for song numbers, but yet that's what's so perfect about it because he gave us just enough and every single song, I feel like he took the time to ensure that it was at its best quality as far as lyricism, as far as production, as far as storytelling. Let me just say, from 24 Karat Magic to Chunky to Perm to That's What I Like, Versace on the Floor to Straight Up and Down, Calling All My Lovelies, Finesse. Too Good To Say Goodbye be the last song. All nine songs are fantastic. And that legitimately was and still is to this day on repeat because it's just such a mix of humor, but yet vulnerability and substance. And what I love about it is the fact that he was so uniquely and flawlessly able to incorporate 90s sounds of R&B and soul, but make it sound appealing to the modern day ear. He even had, I would say, some 80s sounding kind of soul and like that, like, like Versace on the floor or um, like finesse is, is straight up 90s. <laughs> But like Versace on the floor might be a little bit more of like an 80s sound. 24 Karat Magic is number one and I dare someone to fight me about it. <laughs> Alright, we have gotten through all 10 albums. I'm tired. <laughs> that was a lot. And just coming up, let me just tell you, coming up with that list was stressful that was very hard but I stick by it and yeah those are my top 10 no skip albums thank you all so so much for watching this video 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions or like to see more videos like this, be sure to mention it down in the comments. I do read comments, so be sure to let me know how you're feeling about these kinds of videos and I might have a few more up my sleeve for you. I got you. I will see you on the next Danny Sylvan vlog. And don't forget to even check out my fine details by Danny Sylvan playlist right here on this YouTube channel. Bye.